Well, you're welcome to our service today, Sunday, 27th of December. We thought we were going to be in our premises on Ballymckenny Road, but the nation has moved very quickly into level five coronavirus restrictions. And so for this, our first Sunday after Christmas, we are only having an online service. Uh, this is always the Sunday when we share testimonies. So you're going to hear loads of testimonies today. No preaching of the word today, today uh, but some great testimonies from some of our pastors and some other members of the church as well. And I'm believing that God is going to speak to our hearts. Our worship this morning uh, is a worship set that was first recorded and broadcast back in the middle of November. And I remember at the time just being struck by the wonderful spirit of worship and praise that was in it. And so I would, I would invite you to join in to worship with us now. Sing along if you can, wherever you are. And uh, let's just pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you now, Lord, that no matter what the circumstances, we have the opportunity and the freedom to praise you. And we lift up the name of Jesus together. Come and meet with us, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. When night has fallen, when fear is coming, Still you're calling me When faith is lost and my hope exhausted You will be my strength When my mind says I'm not good enough God, you're enough for me I've decided I'm not giving up Cause you won't give up on me You won't give up
morning. You, God, can have my heart. You can have it all. Sing your heart out. slaves we are children of God thank you so much for your love and take our hearts take our all we give you all we give you all who we are you are worthy to be praised we worship you this morning thank you for your almighty power thank you that you are ever present thank you that nothing surprises you you are the mighty God, and it's a privilege to serve you. It's a privilege to be called your own. You can have my heart. You can have it all. Morning, church. Testimony Sunday. You know, every year at the start of the year, I always write down a few things that I want to believe for, um, things in my own life things for my family that I want to be able to look back at the end of the year and have it as a gauge or a check to see that actually sometimes when we don't see God moving, when we look back, we actually see that he's done so much. And so to kind of be able to temperature check that and gauge that, I normally would have a list and then in December I would look over and go, oh, that's amazing. I actually never realized that but God did that and God did that and God did that and then I would set new goals for the next year or new things that I'm bringing before God in prayer and wanting him to act on my behalf and and see happen well this year in January I had only one thing on that list only one thing that I was bringing before God and saying I want to see this happen by the end of 2020 uh, it's the 27th of December now, and it still hasn't happened. So God, you got four more days. I'm joking. I mean, God can certainly do it in the last four days of the year. And if he does, I'll definitely do an update video and share that with you. Um, but it made me realize something much more fundamental. It made me realize that what God requires of all of us is that we bring to him the things that are most precious to us and that we lay them before him and allow him to determine 
whether it's good for us, whether it's healthy for us, whether it's the right time for us. I think of Abraham and Isaac and the fact that Isaac was the promise in flesh given to Abraham. And yet Abraham comes to this point where he's asked to give this up. And we know the outcome of the story. We know that Isaac's life is spared. And we see then that the narrative is really there to test where Abram's heart really is. Does he care more about being obedient to God than the promises that God has given him? And so now, going forward, when I write my list for 2021, there's going to be a footnote at the bottom. One that should have always been there and maybe was sometimes lacking. Where I say, God, this is what I would love to see happen, but your will be done. You have the right to change the plans. You have the right to rewrite my future. I trust in what you're going to do more than a desire for you to fulfill this list that I bring to you. Proverbs 19.21 says, Many are the plans in the mind of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. So going forward, join me this year that our hearts, more than seeing our checklist complete, is to see the purpose of God fulfilled in our community. Wishing you a really blessed 2021 it's going to be a great year why not because your checklist may necessarily get filled but because God is at work and through us his purposes are going to come to pass morning church uh, is a comfort to give testimony in your own house in the comfort of your house so today I'm going to share to you what the Lord has done for me in 2020 Yes, it has been a very challenging year, but my two, my 2020 resolution was like, I'm going to keep confident regardless of what 2020 is going to look like. I didn't know what I meant. I didn't know my testimony, my statement at that time. So basically in April 2020, I lost my job and uh, I was like, okay, regardless of what is happening to me, God help me not to lose confidence in me and to keep praising you. And I didn't know what to do because I just finished my course last year in compliance, my master in compliance, and uh, I didn't know what training to do again, and I was not ready for any PhD at this stage of my life. So I told myself I need to keep myself busy. I don't want to be a stress to my children or to myself. For my mantra, I had, I had to do something useful. Then I started searching online. I saw uh, uh, care. I said, why not try the care job? Then I, I, I called a company and they told me, yes, come. I said, but I don't have the qualification or anything like that. They asked me questions. I, I use my common sense to answer. They say, yes, you got the job. I was surprised. But that was the more rewarded work I haven't done in my life because I was looking after people. And then I realized that in this life, what is matter is people. It's not the material position we have. It's not the qualification. It's not the title, doctor, engineer, all of that. They are important, but they are not important as people because we will be accountable of the way we treat people, the people God put in our lives. I saw families, the, the parents, they couldn't do anything in their house depending on their people to make decisions, their children. Then I start praising God for what I have, that I was thinking that it was not as important as my career. I started putting my family ahead, my children, my husband, my people in my life, because I realized that people are very important. And just putting a smile on somebody's face, it was very rewarded. Money is not as important as people, as important as the joy I got for working as a carer. So I thank God for this uh, this uh, journey brought me. I came out really rewarded and rich. Praise the Lord. I want to give thanks to the Lord today. In Psalm 103, he tells us to not forget his benefits, to praise him for his blessings. And in spite of all that we've experienced in 2020, I give thanks that the Lord has looked after my family and my church throughout this year. We have many reasons to be thankful. 
Um, I had a, a medical condition which the Lord, through his uh, servants in the medical profession, have brought me through. Uh, my mom has been in hospital and out and back in good health. You know, in spite of all the challenges, God is with us. So I give him praise today. I also managed somehow to graduate with a master's degree from the Irish Bible Institute uh, in, in Applied Theology and Leadership, and I give him thanks for that. Our family have been blessed. Our church has been blessed. We've been forced to stop meeting for quite a period of time during the year, but the Lord has kept us together in spirit and in unity. And when we come together back in the building, there's such a sense of common purpose and excitement to be back in his presence. So, Lord, I thank you that you've sustained us during this time, that you've been with us, that your presence has changed and our hearts have grown closer to you. I personally have experienced a revival in my prayer life, which is fantastic. Uh, with a brother in the church, we, we, we pray every single day for at least an hour and we're really seeing answers to prayer as we do that and I encourage the rest of you to do likewise we've been able to get the 24 hour prayer underway here in the church and it's such a miracle that we've actually sustained that so what a year there are many challenges but God is still in control and he is with his people and at this season of Christmas we're very conscious that he is Emmanuel God with us and Lord I give you thanks for all your blessings today and I thank you for the year ahead and I thank you for what you're going to do in our midst in Jesus name Amen You never change. You never change. 
You're too faithful to fail me. Merry Christmas, church. I hope everyone had a good Christmas. And um, just a word of to encourage everyone who might be going through a, very, a difficult time around this time. I know 2020 has been an extremely challenging year for everyone. However, it was also a year of hope, faith, and reflection. The reason I say this is because since the first lockdown, we hoped that things would get better every day. We, we hoped it will end soon and soon. But here we are, still facing restrictions and a looming lockdown. In our life, in our lives, we always we have lockdowns, but thanks for Jesus Christ, who came to free us from this lockdown, the lockdown of sin. I can say today proudly that I am free from the lockdown of sin. Last few years I've, I've faced my, uh, a few challenges, a few lockdowns myself, but God has been faithful. This year, particularly, I was able to complete my, my master's degree, which was extremely challenging. I had deferred this course for a year, and it was extremely difficult to get back into it. But thanks God, I was able to go back into it and also be able to do my work placements, which were not paid. I had to do two of them, which was six months, three months, three months. But thanks God I was able to go through that, do my thesis, and all the assignments that were due, still working full-time, 
and being able to keep up with my bills. I thank God and I can say today that I am grateful because I stayed on, I held on and I prayed without ceasing. I said, God, guide me. I knew down my heart, I had prayed for this and I wanted a new career and God guided me through, held my hand and I can proudly say and confess me that today, this week, last week, I actually started on my new career. I hope that I would work very close to home in Dryda. And I actually, God gave me that job in Dryda. I praise God and I thank God for that. And I would like to encourage you, whoever is on a lockdown, who feels they are in a lockdown, to be hopeful, to pray, to remember that God, he's the answer, he has the answer. And his time is the best time. Remember, fast the Russians, 16 to 18. Pray with us, even in terms of difficulties. Thank you, and I wish you a best 2021. Church, and welcome to Testimony Sunday. This morning, I, as I reflect on the year of 2020, there are many thoughts that come to my head and many testimonies I could bring this morning. But this morning, I want to talk about perfect peace and how I've had to lean in and walk in that perfect peace more than ever this year than any other year and to know that God is real God is alive God is living and I can trust him in all seasons of life I want to encourage you from this verse and it's Isaiah 26 3 to 4 you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you all whose thoughts are fixed on you trust in the Lord always for the Lord God is the eternal rock. That verse has really stood out to me and it's been one of those verses and promises that the Lord has given me for this year that I've got to, had to really put into practice when there's so much negativity, there's so much fear, there's so much anxiousness, there's so many things with the what this year has brought. And it'd be easy to listen to the negative, it'd be easy to listen to all the voices around us and if ever there's a time I've learned to be more in tune with what the Holy Spirit is speaking it's this year and I felt um, as I fed my spirit on the word of God and I'm a Christian many years and if ever there was a war a time when we had to put that word in action it was this year and through every trial and tribulation in life so when we feed our spirit on the word of God our spirit is strong so this year um, the times when I feel the negativity or the anxiousness or different things creeping in. I've just leaned on the word of God. I've leaned on this verse and I've put this into action in our lives because we want to be not just hearers of the word, but doers of the word. And we can know the word inside out, upside down, the word of God. But if it's not an action in our life, what does that mean? And if ever there's a time where to be Christ to the people on earth it's right now in this dark time and we are light right now we are light to the people we are hope to the people so I've been learning to really come into a place of trust stay in a place of peace and this is really my testimony for 2020 that the Lord has sustained me the Lord has um, kept me strong in this place when I was weak, he was he carried me through and he brought me back up again. And today I am very thankful for all the people's love, all the congregation's support and encouragement and um, believing in me and encouraging me to be the best that God has called me to, do, to be. And it's times like this where we need to press on, stay focused, stay determined and stay steadfast and continue in our destiny that God has ordained for us. God bless you on this Testimony Sunday. Love you lots. Appreciate you. God bless you. Good morning, church. And as you know, uh, 2020 was a very challenging year. But in the midst of that, um, we have seen uh, some answered prayer uh, in our life. So I'll just let uh, Sonia tell you about that. Yes, um, first of all, I really want to thank God. We want to thank God because um, we've seen miracles of healing in our family. 
my brother-in-law was very sick. He had a heart condition. He was in hospital for uh, two months. Um, and all that in the midst of COVID, of COVID, of the first lockdown. But uh, he was able to be discharged from the hospital and uh, he's doing very well now. So praise God for that. And the second one is my dad. Um, from the start of the year, he's been challenged in his health. So many things happened. Um, but the main one was uh, that he had problem with his liver. And uh, we thank God because the worst is behind and he's doing much better. And uh, he's even making plans, projects about the future. So we're really, really grateful um, to God for that. Um, the fourth uh, testimony I have is um, we were looking for the house from the start of the year and you know with covid and lockdown and finding a house uh, in Drada and around Drada was very hard and uh, we even uh, shared that with the pastors and some some of you may know because you've been praying for us so thank god god has made a way and he has provided a beautiful house for us really the kind of house that we were praying for God has provided so we give him all the glory to that and thank you all for your prayers as well and uh, the last one is um, about uh, God has blessed us uh, financially um, there were situations in the family that have been like blocked for more than 20 years and this year God has opened the way that was really a miracle and we want to thank God for that as well. We give him the glory because in the midst of everything that has happened, we've seen people losing family members. We even lost people around us that we knew quite well, but it has not stopped God from being good and from being faithful. So Amen. we praise his name for that. Amen. 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 Hi everyone, it's Lindsay here. I wanted to be part of Testimony Sunday just to share my story, my good news that we got this week. Um, it's absolutely amazing. and We've been, with my partner Anthony, he's been going through cancer, uh, cancer recovery, chemotherapy, surgeries and everything over the last couple of years. And so that was all done and, you know, thank God, we finished with the surgeries and his chemotherapy and there was no signs of anything else and it was just absolutely amazing but his routine scans were in August and then they seemed to find something new in his liver which scared us and the liver specialist pretty much assured us that it was liver mets from his bowel which means that it spread to his bowel so we that was really really scary um so we really were in an awful way so that was about two three weeks ago and then we had a scan on friday so obviously just before uh, just all the time praying and even together me and anthony would pray together at night time even before we went to bed every single day we put all our trust and faith in god and we had our his scan on friday then we were told that we wouldn't get our results until January because obviously with Christmas and everything and the doctor's clinic isn't until January so we were a bit you know kind of having a daunting Christmas um to say the least but then we were so lucky with Anthony's original surgeon from his bell because she said that if we wanted to have them before Christmas that she could tell us so we were trying to decide whether it's better to know or not know because we were assuming we didn't know what to assume really. Um, so we got the scan and then on Tuesday we called his nurse and he was, we were very apprehensive for the phone call. But she, we rang him and he, and she said, Anthony, I have your scan here. I actually was just about to call you. Um, she's like, it's really good news. Like there's, the PET scan has showed up, absolutely no cancer in your body and the liver mets aren't showing up as cancerous. So, my goodness, the overwhelming joy, the tears, 
the, it was just absolute and utter gratitude to God. It was an absolute miracle. And we are so, so grateful. And oh my goodness, even though, and they, they said, there is still something there, but they're going to obviously investigate, make sure that it's nothing. So they're, we're absolutely blessed with his whole surgical team. Everyone that's been dealing, dealing with Anthony over the last couple of years has been absolutely amazing. And it's just completely by the grace of God. And I'm so, so grateful. And I want to thank you so, so much. It's just absolutely amazing. Oh, uh, I want to wish everyone a happy Christmas and a happy new year. I know it's a sad time for people, but it's also can be a happy time. And I am pray for everybody that they have a Merry Christmas. And I thank you all so much. And I'll see you in the new year. Bye. You know, it's amazing how something new can just change our attitude to things. Uh, I shared uh, some weeks back that we lost our much beloved old English sheepdog, uh, Holly, that she died. And uh, well, we got a new puppy and this is Poppy the puppy. And Poppy is an amazing bundle of fun. She's full of life. She's fluffy. She's got big paws. So she's going to grow up to be a massive dog. And she at the moment is in that phase where she just will eat anything and and chew anything as well, but is absolutely adorable at the same time. And really thinking about new things now, I just wanted to uh, share my testimony because this has been a year of new things for me. Now you might say, well, Nick, come on, 2020, what a year it has been. I mean, we've, we've, had, a, we've had a pandemic, and if one coronavirus wasn't enough, we've now got a, a worse mutant coronavirus that's on the loose. We have uh, politics has gone crazy. Uh, I've, I've never known such bizarre politics taking place in the world in my lifetime. And uh, if that wasn't bad enough, we had murder hornets giant hornets on the loose and spreading around the world. And even in this last month, we're finding out about Russian hit squads of assassins trying to kill people with poisoned underpants. My goodness, you know, if you wrote a novel about everything that's happened in 2020 and sent it to a publisher, they would reject it as being too far-fetched. But can I tell you, it's also for me being a year of God doing new things in my life and in my work for him. You know, for a long, long time, the pastors of the church, we discussed whether we should do some kind of streaming or online services. And we quickly decided quite some time ago that we weren't going to simply have a Facebook feed or a stream running Facebook Live just showing what was happening in the Sunday services because people come to our Sunday services with an expectation uh, that they're not going to be broadcast all over the internet for somebody on the other side of the world to see, maybe when they're having a real personal and private moment with the Lord. And we'd also discovered that basically whether you're talking about preaching or whether you're talking about praise and worship, sometimes you can be in a meeting and what seems really, really good doesn't translate as that when you watch a recording of it later. So we had decided that if we were going to do any kind of online services, that uh, they would have to be pre-recorded and recorded quite separately and as an addition to our normal Sunday services. And we just thought we haven't got the time, we haven't got the resources, we, we haven't got the energy to do something like that. But guess what? Everything changed. And I was actually, when the coronavirus thing began to get worse, um, I really began to hit home. I was, first of all, I was in Italy whenever things began to get bad in Italy. And I, I flew into uh, airport, Catania Airport in Sicily. And uh, there's people basically in spacesuits that are uh, holding guns at me, measuring my temperature as I'm arriving. And I'm thinking, gosh, this is, this is more serious than I thought it was. And then a couple of weeks later, I was in Nigeria and we realized that the lockdown was going to start back home in Ireland and I had to get home. And because I was flying through Paris and things were getting bad in France, I didn't even know if I was going to get home. And I, I changed my flight. I flew home a day earlier than I had planned. 
and uh, and I did something I normally never do. Now I like I f I book the cheapest seat I can on an aeroplane, and as uh, often I do get a free upgrade to business class, which is lovely when it happens. But I'm not going to pay for it. But I want to tell you, I I thought about that flight home from. Lagos to Paris in particular, and I thought about being jam-packed in beside people when there's a pandemic starting, and uh, I, I, I paid the extra money to book a business class seat and come home with plenty of space all around me. And, and I remember getting home, got home on the Friday, and we had a pastor's meeting on the Friday night. And can I tell you, by that Sunday morning, we had an online service up for people to watch and worship along with us and God enabled us to start something that we've continued and we've continued even when we've been allowed to start restart in-person services we are continuing with the online services because we're finding it's reaching people that normally would not be reached by the ministry of the church so that was that was something new now another thing was that in my work with Evangelical Alliance Ireland uh, it had been suggested to me that I could make a weekly video uh, on behalf of EAI and uh, I had thought about it and I'd looked into what's involved in doing video production and everything else and it just seemed so complicated I thought you know what I, I said I'm too old I'm too old to learn something like this uh, it's going to need you're going to have to wait till there's a younger guy doing this job for something like that to happen but because of the pandemic then I found myself recording a video for St. Patrick's Day and then just kept on doing it. Not just a weekly video for Evangelical Alliance, but a daily video, uh, the Take Fives for Solid Rock Church. Again, something new that God did in my life this year in 2020. And, you know, it's, it's been great seeing how God has just started doing something fresh in the midst of all of this chaos. And then, of course, there was the 24-7 prayer. You know, Janice and I have had a vision for 24-7 prayer for years. And I think the most we ever managed was four days. We once managed four days of non-stop prayer. And that was way back about 15 years ago or something like that. But praise God, since, uh, since March, we've now been having non-stop 24-7 prayer going forth from Solid Rock Church, and we're going to continue that into next year as well. And the last thing I want to say of God doing something new was uh, just a couple of weeks ago, God began speaking into my spirit about our carol service, that I, I felt the Holy Spirit directing me that rather than just preach a message, I was to write a poem, which is something I've never done before. And I have to tell you, I felt really nervous about it because I thought, what if it's horrible? What if people don't like it? And I'm sure some people didn't like it anyway. But you know what? A lot of people came to me and said they were really touched by it. And whenever I was struggling with the Lord, whether I should do this or not, the Lord said to me, I felt it so clearly, it doesn't matter if it goes wrong. Even if you get it wrong, even if it doesn't work, you must never, Nick, you must never get to a place where you're afraid to do something new for me. And I believe that's what the Lord wants me to share with you through this testimony today, is we should never get to a place where we are afraid of doing something new and innovative for the Lord. And part of our vision as a church, certainly my vision as a pastor, has been that my job is to help, bring, help other Christians bring their dreams to life and to fruition. And I do believe this, that as God is starting to do new things in the church, that there's many people now sat watching this online service and God's dropped something in your spirit, something new, something fresh. You know, it may be a kind of a ministry that you've never seen anybody do before and you wonder, is it, are you just being foolish or is it even possible? But I believe this. I believe that God has dropped all kinds of dreams and all kinds of visions and all kinds of creative gifts into the hearts of his people. And 2020 has been a year of new things for me. But I'm praying that 2021 will be a year of new things for all of the church and that many of you will step out into fresh faith and fresh ministries and fresh expressions of sharing the kingdom of God in the year to come. God bless you. Hello, I would just like to share some testimony about God's goodness. It's been a very difficult year for people throughout the world. Uh, I think we could we could definitely say that it's been a year of the unexpected. 
And to, to make matters worse, to heighten that, we've also, many people have had to just de continue to deal with the stuff of life on top of um, all that's been going on. And um, people have lost loved ones, ourselves included. We've lost family members and it, it's been very painful time. And some of us have been through so many dark days and difficult times and maybe just facing storms that we just didn't expect. And when something happens unexpected, it hits us all the more harder. But you know, the other morning I woke up, I got up early and the sun was shining, the sky was blue and the birds were singing. And it just reminded me that every day is a gift from God. And every day we have reason to praise the Lord through the good times, through the bad times. Every day, as long as God has given us breath, we have reason to praise him and we can praise him on our journey. None of us know how long our journey is, but as long as we have breath, we can praise him. And we may be finding ourselves in storms, but you know, God is faithful. He will lead us through the storm. He will lead us through the valley. He will sustain us in the storm. Sometimes when we can't see in the stormy waters, he will just give us a glimpse of that shore because the shore is there. We will land safely, but sometimes it's very hard to see that. And so I just want to give encouragement as well. Um, there's, there's a song and it says, in times like these, we need a savior. In times like these, we need an anchor. Be very sure that your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. And this solid rock is Jesus. You see, there are many voices out there. We're in an uncertain, shaky world. And we need to not be listening to the voices to the left or to the right. We need to keep our focus upon Jesus because he is our anchor. And I thank the Lord that through difficult days that I have been through personally, that he has been my sustaining anchor. And when I hold on to him, he will walk with me through the valley. He will walk with me on the mountaintop and I have reason to praise him. So I just give testimony today to his goodness and to his faithfulness. And I pray that you will just continue to lift up his name and praise him and thank him for every breath that he has given to you. May God bless you and may this year ahead bring hope for all of us. God bless. Thank you so much for joining us for our online service. Uh, next Sunday, we will be back again uh, and we will be sharing some exciting vision for 2021 and what we believe the Lord has in store for us then. Uh, meanwhile, as we're still in the holiday period, uh, there will be no midweek service being aired online uh, this week, but our Take Fives will continue Monday to Saturday. Don't forget, uh, thank you for participating in our 24-7 prayer. The links for that are on the website and the Facebook page. And thank you again, all those of you that are participating in online giving, that even when the doors of the church are closed, the bills of the church are still paid. And we really value your, your support. So thank you indeed for your faithful giving unto the Lord. See you next week. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>